For the following exercises, use each pair of functions to find f of g of x and g of f of x, and then we have to just simplify our answers. So we have two sets of functions here. We both have to find f of g of x and g of f of x for both of them. Uh, what does that mean? I don't know. All right, guys, thanks for... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I definitely know, right? So let's go. These are composite functions. Basically, this is notation for taking two independent functions and mixing them together. That's all we're doing is you're just mixing the f function with the g function and voila, you get a composite function. Well, how do we do that? It's quite simple, just as long as you can read the uh, way that they write it here perfectly. So I'm going to do for, I'll just call this like letter A. We have to do f of g of x. Okay, now down here, tips and tricks. With composite functions, you always work from inner to outer. And what I mean by inner and outer, I mean by parentheses. So you always work from the innermost parentheses all the way to the outermost parentheses. All right, so the innermost function all the way to the outermost function. So in this case, g of x would be your inner function. It's the innermost for the parentheses. And then you have an f function here. That's your outermost. All right, so we're going to be working with the g of x function first and then move to the outer function. Now, what's the first thing you got to do? Okay, well, you got to plug in the input. It's usually a number for the inner function and just use your algebra to solve. But here, they didn't give us a number. They just said g of x. So for number one, if I go by our number scheme here, number one, g of x is what? Oh, well, they told us that g of x was the square root of x plus two. Can't really solve that. There's no number that they made me put in here, so I can't really solve. So you just go to the next part. The second part is you're going to use that new input, which was what you got out in part one, and you input it into and plug it into the outer function. The outer function was f. So f of the square root of x plus two. It's what your answer was in the beginning part. So that's why I changed it to this. Okay, so now let's see. Well, what was the f function? The f function was this, right? x squared plus 1. But instead of all the x values, I'm going to put in square root of 2. So square root of x plus 2 squared plus 1. And now you just have to simplify. So if I say f of the square root of x plus 2, a square root being squared, bye-bye, they are inverses of each other. So now you're just left with x plus 2 plus 1. And now if I sum this all up, I can say f of square root of x plus 2 is the same thing as f of g of x. And it would be x plus 2. 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. So this is your final answer for the first part, f of g of x. Now, let's see, I'm just going to pull, just so that I have a little bit more room. Let's pull this over. Okay, I could work with that. Now for the second part, b, we need to do g of f of x. Same exact idea, but now it looks like your f of x is your inner function and your g of x is your outer one. Okay, so work from inner to outer. Number one, f of x in this case is what? x squared plus one. So x squared plus one. Can't do anything because they didn't give us any number to plug in. So now we move on to the second part. I use this input and I plug it in for the outer function, which was g. So it would be g of x squared plus one. I plug in that value for all x's. So it would be the square root of x squared plus 1 plus 2. And then clean it up. g 
of x squared plus 1, which is the same thing as g of f of x. We're getting the final answer. This all equals the square root of x squared plus 3. And that is our final answer for the second part. Look how easy peasy this is, guys, right? But I just want you guys to notice something. Even though we took the same functions and we flipped them, we made two independent composite functions, one was f of g, the other one was g of x, the answers are not the same. Composite functions are not equal to each other if you're taking two functions. They are completely independent of each other. So be careful. Okay, let's do the second one. Same exact thing, so I'm going to kind of fast it up or, you know, increase the speed, but we, we got it. So for A, let's do f of g of x. Inner function is g of x. So for number one, let's work with that. g of x was just this one, x squared plus 3. Didn't give me a value, so... I got to move on to the second part. I'm going to take that answer and plug it in for the outer one. The outer function was f, right? Outer. And this was inner. So f of x squared plus 3. I'm taking this answer and plugging it in for the f function. So anytime that I have an x in my f function, I replace it with this. So it looks like it's the square root of... Well, what was x? x squared plus 3. That's it. I can't clean this up anymore. So I say f of x squared plus 3, which is the same thing as f of g of x. And that equals the square root of x squared plus 3. First answer down. That was quick. Because we got the hang of it, right? We got this. Number two, or let's do, let's say letter B, right? Now we just need to do G of F of X. Okay, inner to outer. Inner is now the F of X. Let's see if it will be the same. I think you guys might know the answer. So F of X is the square root of X. Can't simplify because they didn't give me a number. So now I just take this and plug it in for my G function. Whoop. Hold on. Okay. G of the square root of x, because you take this and you plug it in. Okay, and the G of x function was x squared plus 3. So all the x's you just put in that new value. So it would be uh, square root of x squared plus 3. Now let's try to clean it up. We can clean it up here, and we're getting to the answer. So whether you say G of the square root of x or g of f of x, square root being raised to the second, bye-bye. <laughs> um, yeah, they're the opposites of each other, so they get canceled out. So this is just x plus 3, and voila, there is the answer to the last part. And once again, take note, this answer is not the same as this answer. Composite functions are independent of each other. They, the placement matters. All right, guys? Um, as you can tell, we've had so much fun here because math is great. You guys got this. Math is fun. It's like doing puzzles. And I hope I can, uh, hope my enthusiasm, you know, shows that to you guys. Um, let me know in the comments what you thought about this lesson. I love to hear from you guys. And if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button, smash it, destroy it, whatever you guys do. Um, I thank you so much for that. And I will see you guys all in the next lesson. All right. Have an awesome day. Take care.